In the bustling streets of Seoul, a prostitute receives instruction from her boss on the phone and drives to the appointed place to pick up the waiting client. However, this prostitute disappears after the night, this is the second girl who has disappeared under the boss. Obviously, there is a reason. The boss begins to track down the truth and unexpectedly finds a horrific serial murder case. Hi guys, today Detective Jojo is going to tell you about a high-scoring Korean suspense film adapted from an actual event called The Chaser. Our main character, Jung Ho, was once a police officer. A few years ago, he was fired from the police station because he collected black money. After that he becomes a pimp who controls prostitutes and arranges clients for them. Recently two of his prostitutes have gone missing. However, Jung Ho does not dare to report to the police because pimping is illegal in Korea. This night, while driving, Jung Ho receives a phone call. The customer requests the prostitute for home service. Jung Ho then asks a prostitute named Mi Jin to serve this customer. Mi Jin, at this time, has a heavy cold. She initially does not want to work, but she still has a young daughter to raise. To earn more money to raise her daughter, she can only drive to pick up the guest. After Jung Ho returns to his office, he finds the guest's phone number looks familiar, so he opens his record book to check, and finds that his previous two prostitutes disappeared after receiving this customer. Jung Ho suspects that this guy has trafficked the previous two prostitutes. To catch this guy and retrieve the missing girls, Jung Ho calls and asks Mi Jin to send this guest's address to him by text message. The guest's name is Yang Min. He appears to be a harmless young man. Yang Min tells Mi Jin to park the car in the alley and then walk for a few minutes before arriving at his residence. When Yang Min arrives at the entrance, he tries several keys before opening the door. This does not look like Yang Min's usual place. Mi Jin remembers his address and is looking for an opportunity to send a text message to Jung Ho. Soon, Mi Jin realizes something is wrong with this place. The soil in the yard seems to have been turned over recently. A shovel is stuck in the dirt, and a hungry dog wanders around it. The hungry dog seems very interested in the thing buried under the soil. There is also a faint smell of decay in the air. They cross the courtyard into the house. Mi Jin immediately proposes to take a shower first. She comes to the bathroom and wants to send the address to Jung Ho, but the phone has no signal. Just when she is holding the phone around looking for a signal, she finds a strand of a woman's long hair in the corner with a piece of bloody scalp on it. Terrified, Mi Jin immediately realizes that the previous two missing prostitutes have not been trafficked, but murdered. Mi Jin forces herself to calm down, and then lies to Yang Min that she has to go to the car to get something. But when she reaches the house door, she realizes that the door has long been locked. Yang Min tears off his disguise at this time, revealing his true color as a murderer. He ties her up, and throws her into the bathroom. With a sobbing voice, Mi Jin begs Yang Min for mercy, saying she has a seven-year-old daughter. Yang Min coldly takes out his weapons, a hammer and chisel, and tries to make a brain hole in Mi Jin's head. But Mi Jin keeps struggling against it. In a rage, Yang Min uses his hammer to hit Mi Jin's head, who passes out immediately. Just as Yang Min is about to kill Mi Jin, the doorbell rings, interrupting Yang Min's atrocity. An elderly couple comes over to visit their friend, Mr. Park, the actual owner of the house. Yang Min lies to the couple that Mr. Park moved out a long time ago, but the couple sees the dog and immediately recognizes it is their friend Mr. Park's beloved pet. Seeing that the dog has been starved to the skin and bones, the elderly couple become suspicious. Yang Min then tricks them into the house and kills them. It turns out that Yang Min killed the real owner of the house Mr. Park long ago and lived here afterward. After killing the elderly couple, Yang Min takes their car keys and prepares to park their car further to avoid arousing suspicion. Meanwhile, Jung Ho is unable to contact Mi Jin so he calls his police friend named Gil Wu for help. However, Gil Wu cannot assist because the mayor of Seoul, whom he is guarding, has been attacked with feces by a citizen. This results in the police suffering a media firestorm. Jung Ho has to look for Mi Jin himself. He drives around the neighborhood and ends up finding Mi Jin's car. He guesses that the guest lives in this neighborhood, but doesn't know exactly which house, so he has to keep driving around and try his luck. He accidentally collides with Yang Min, who is driving the elderly couple's car. Jung Ho knocks on Yang Min's car window, and Yang Min rolls down the window. Jung Ho asks Yang Min to give his phone number, 
and Zheng Ho will let the insurance company compensate. Yang Min just wants to hurry up and leave, so he says he doesn't need compensation. Zheng Ho thinks this guy is strange. Suddenly, Zheng Ho notices there is splattered blood on Yang Min's clothes. With years of police intuition, Zheng Ho thinks that this guy may be the guest he is looking for, so he tries to call the guest's phone number. <laughs> Yang Min's phone rings. <laughs> Realizing that he is exposed, Yang Min panics and abandons the car to escape, but is soon caught by Zheng Ho. Zheng Ho wants to torture Yang Min to find out the whereabouts of Mi Jin and other missing prostitutes. But they are discovered by patrol police and are brought back to a nearby police station. Zheng Ho tells the police that Yang Min has trafficked prostitutes. Yang Min looks calm after hearing this, and says he didn't traffic people, but just killed them all. Yeah. Yang Min also says frankly that he has killed nine people. At the police station, Zheng Ho continues to call his police friend Gil Wu for help. By this time, Gil Wu has just arrested the feces thrower and is escorting this dude. This guy has not taken a shower for years because the water supply has been stopped in his neighborhood, so he throws feces at the mayor to make him taste the stench. Now the whole country is talking about the police protection of the mayor is terrible, so the police department urgently needs to solve a big case to divert the public's attention. When Gil Wu hears Zheng Ho say that Yang Min admits that he has killed nine people, Gil Wu is very interested in solving this serial murder case. Because if this serial murder case is solved, the police will be able to prove their ability, and the public will not keep reprimanding the police for not protecting the mayor well. Soon, Gil Wu arrives at the police station and takes Yang Min away for interrogation. Yang Min still looks calm. He tells Gil Wu that he used a hammer and chisel to kill people, then cut open the victim's heels and hung them up to bleed to reduce the body's weight and make it easier to dump and bury the dead body. Yang Min then provocatively changes his story to say that he has killed more than nine people because he did not confirm whether Mi Jin was dead or not. Gil Wu continues to ask Yang Min's motive for the crime and where to bury the body, but Yang Min suddenly remains silent, not saying anything. Despite the confession, the police have no physical evidence, so they cannot detain Yang Min for long. Zheng Ho still cannot believe that this young man is a psychopathic murderer, because if Yang Min is a killer, Zheng Ho becomes the sinner who sent Mi Jin to the murderer. Therefore, Zheng Ho is more willing to believe that Yang Min has just trafficked Mi Jin. Hearing Yang Min say that he didn't confirm whether Mi Jin was dead or not, Zheng Ho asks Gil Wu to find Mi Jin as soon as possible, but Gil Wu doesn't care about Mi Jin at all. Gil Wu now just wants to find evidence to convict Yang Min as soon as possible. This way, the police can divert the attention of the media and the masses, so they do not keep reprimanding the police for failing to protect the mayor. Therefore, Gil Wu has no intention of rescuing Mi Jin at all, but directly regards Mi Jin as the deceased who has already been killed by Yang Min. Gil Wu asks Zheng Ho to take the forensic scientist to Mi Jin's house to extract her DNA and compare it with the blood on Yang Min's clothes. As long as the two matches, the police can officially arrest Yang Min and convict him. Zheng Ho then takes the forensic scientist to Mi Jin's house to collect the hair. This is the first time Zheng Ho comes to Mi Jin's home, he then knows that Mi Jin raises a daughter. See the little girl alone, Zheng Ho then takes the little girl with him to take care of her, and also makes up his mind that he must find this little girl's mother, Mi Jin. Zheng Ho knows that Gil Wu has no intention of looking for Mi Jin, so he plans to go and find Mi Jin himself. Zheng Ho searches for the car that Yang Min drove before, and finds a set of keys Yang Min has accidentally left behind. Then Zheng Ho asks his man to try the set of keys in every entrance door in the nearby neighborhood, and sees which house's entrance door this set of keys is able to open. Then, Zheng Ho finds Yang Min's sister and asks her what is Yang Min's current residential address, since there is a great possibility that Mi Jin is trapped there. But Yang Min's sister tells Zheng Ho that she has broken off contact with Yang Min long ago. Three years ago, her son was hit by Yang Min with a hammer and chisel. Then, Yang Min ran away. Since then, Yang Min's sister has never seen Yang Min. Her son has developed dementia as a result. Seeing the wound on the forehead of the little boy, Zheng Ho feels sorry. Zheng Ho ponders for a moment, thinking that Yang Min may have also approached other pimps' prostitutes. Other pimps may have recorded Yang Min's current residential address. However, other pimps do not cooperate with Zheng Ho's investigation. 
To find more clues, Jung Ho uses violent means to interrogate a few pimps, and indeed finds that there are prostitutes missing under them. And the last guest of these missing prostitutes is Yang Min. Since the pimps are doing illegal business, they do not dare to report to the police, and no one really cares about these prostitutes, which is why Yang Min has been at large for so long. Jung Ho visits several pimps. They also don't know where Yang Min lives. But the good news is, that Jung Ho finds a surviving prostitute, whom Yang Min has also approached before. This surviving prostitute didn't die because she refused to go to Yang Min's house. She served Yang Min at a hotel. Jung Ho speculates that Yang Min does not want to kill in a public place and attract police attention, which is why he did not kill this prostitute in the hotel. The surviving prostitute tells Jung Ho that Yang Min is a weird guy. He is unable to erect, but keeps looking for prostitutes. <laughs> After knowing so much about Yang Min, Jung Ho finally believes that Yang Min's previous statement about killing many people was true. Yang Min is definitely a pervert. Mi Jin at this moment must be very dangerous. On the other hand, Jung Ho's man tries the keys door to door in the neighborhood and finally opens a door. He immediately calls to tell Jung Ho. Jung Ho rushes to the house, the house is empty, and the cell phone signal here is great. Jung Ho speculates that there must be no signal where Mi Jin is now, otherwise Mi Jin would have sent a text message to him, which means that this house is not the place he is looking for. Jung Ho turns around, goes out in disappointment, and bumps into the house owner returning. The owner tries to run away because he is in debt and mistakes Jung Ho for a debt collector. After a chase, Jung Ho and his man finally catch the house owner. The owner says he is Yang Min's former cellmate. Yang Min came to him four months ago and stayed here for two weeks. After that, they never contacted each other again, so he doesn't know where Yang Min lives now. At this moment, Jung Ho notices that there seems to be something behind the wallpaper. The house owner explains that Yang Min painted those. Jung Ho tears open the wallpaper, and sees the wall full of black paintings. Yang Min painted a lot of tortured people with twisted limbs, which is extremely horrible. When Jung Ho comes out of the house, he finds that Mi Jin's daughter, who was waiting in the car, has disappeared. It turns out that the little girl in the car mistook a passerby for her mother, so she got out and went after her, only to be hit by a delivery guy on a motorcycle at the corner. When Jung Ho finds the girl, she is lying next to a pile of scattered meal boxes, and the delivery boy has fled the scene. Jung Ho immediately sends her to the hospital. The doctor says there is no serious injury. But the little girl was hit on the head, maybe she will be in a coma for a few days. Looking at the injured little girl, Jung Ho feels extremely guilty because it was him who sent Mi Jin to serve Yang Min. On the other hand, the police are frustrated. The DNA match result shows that the blood on Yang Min's clothes is not Mi Jin's, so Yang Min cannot be convicted. Why is the blood not Mi Jin's? We can look back at the previous scene. Yang Min only wore underwear when he hit Mi Jin, and the DNA sample the police extracted is the blood on Yang Min's shirt. This blood should be from the elderly couple killed by Yang Min, so it does not match Mi Jin's DNA. Then, the police discover that this is the third time Yang Min has voluntarily admitted to being a murderer. The police found no evidence the first two times, so the prosecutor had to release Yang Min. Yang Min is obviously enjoying teasing the police. If the police cannot find evidence this time, they will have to acquit Yang Min again. The police bring in a psychologist, wants the psychologist to break through Yang Min's psychological defenses, and get him to reveal where he buried the dead bodies of the people he had killed. The psychologist immediately sees Yang Min's weakness, and says that Yang Min is unable to get an erection, and is incapable of having intercourse with a woman, which is why he likes to hammer a chisel into a woman's head to simulate the intercourse process. Apparently, the psychologist is right, so Yang Min becomes furious and tries to attack the psychologist. Although the police quickly subdue Yang Min, he still does not tell where he buried the dead bodies. At this moment, Jung Ho rushes back to the police station. He is eager to find Mi Jin, so he beats Yang Min up, forcing him to tell the whereabouts of Mi Jin. To solve the serial murder case quickly, the police do not stop Jung Ho from beating Yang Min. Unexpectedly, after being beaten by Jung Ho, Yang Min tells the police where he buried the dead bodies. Yang Min tells them that the location is a stone carving factory where he used to work, the police immediately rush to the place and start digging, 
but nothing is found. The police are fooled by Yang Min again. On the other hand, the police chief is preparing to escort Yang Min to the stone carving factory, so that Yang Min can identify the location of the dead bodies. The prosecutor, who has previously acquitted Yang Min twice, suddenly appears. Unexpectedly, the prosecutor asks the police chief to release Yang Min. If Yang Min is really a serial killer, then the prosecutor must take responsibility for letting Yang Min go twice before. The prosecutor does not want to take responsibility for releasing Yang Min twice before because he may get fired. He has to find a reason to let the police chief release Yang Min and makes Yang Min innocent. The prosecutor sees the injury on Yang Min's face, and says that the police must have forced Yang Min to confess under severe torture. The prosecutor says the police must have forced an innocent Yang Min to be a serial killer to save face because the police failed to protect the mayor and got shit splashes on the mayor's face. The prosecutor asks the police chief to immediately release Yang Min and arrest Jung Ho who beat Yang Min. In Korea, police obey prosecutor's instructions, so the police chief agrees to do so. The police chief calls Gil Woo and informs him to arrest Jung Ho for injuring Yang Min. A confused Jung Ho is then arrested and escorted to a police car. In the police car, Jung Ho learns that the police chief has released Yang Min. Jung Ho knows that once this demon regains his freedom, he will kill Mi Jin if she is still alive. Jung Ho is so anxious that he can only kick the driver hard, making a car accident and fleeing the scene. Knowing that if Mi Jin is still alive, Yang Min will go back and kill Mi Jin. Jung Ho tries to run back to the previous neighborhood and continue looking for Mi Jin. Meanwhile, Mi Jin wakes up from the coma, picks up a piece of floor tile, cuts the rope with lots of efforts, and stumbles out of the house. The street is empty. Mi Jin runs to a nearby corner shop for help. After understanding the situation, the store owner hides Mi Jin in the back, giving Mi Jin a phone. Mi Jin calls the police first and then tries to call Jung Ho. But at this time, Jung Ho is running, and does not hear the ringing. After the police receive Mi Jin's report, the police station immediately contacts a nearby patrol police officer, but the patrol officer is sleeping in his car and doesn't hear the order. After leaving a voice message for Jung Ho, an injured Mi Jin soon passes out again. At this moment, a more desperate scene occurs. Yang Min returns to the neighborhood, and happens to come to this corner shop to buy cigarettes. Perhaps because of Yang Min's harmless looks, the store owner tells him about Mi Jin's request for help. <laughs> Yang Min immediately understands everything. He calmly asks the store owner for a hammer, saying he will protect them, and then locks the door. At this point, a female police officer following Yang Min comes near the shop. It turns out that the police chief sent two police officers to follow Yang Min to see if they could find any evidence. The male police officer missed the subway, so only the female police officer arrived here. But she just stares from afar because she doesn't dare to enter the store to check it out. Inside the store, Yang Min kills the store owner with ease, then goes to the back and raises the hammer at the sleeping Mi Jin. At this time, Jung Ho arrives in the neighborhood. He still believes that Mi Jin is in the area. Suddenly several police cars drive towards the corner shop, and Jung Ho follows them to the door, only to learn that Yang Min has brutally killed two more people, one of whom is Mi Jin. Yang Min fled through a window long ago. Jung Ho comes to the crime scene in despair, looking at the blood all over the floor, imagining Mi Jin's desperation. Looking at his phone, he realizes that Mi Jin left a voice message for him. <laughs> Listening to the message Mi Jin left, Jung Ho feels very guilty. If he hadn't let Mi Jin receive Yang Min, she wouldn't have been killed and Mi Jin's daughter wouldn't have lost her mother. A furious Jung Ho wants to catch Yang Min, so he continues to wander the neighborhood. Suddenly the statue in front of the church catches his attention. The statue looks exactly like the mural Yang Min has painted on the wall. Jung Ho immediately goes to the church and asks the priest who made the statue. The priest tells Jung Ho that Mr. Park, the building contractor, found someone to make the statue when the church was expanded not long ago. Therefore, Mr. Park should know who made the statue. Then, the priest gives Jung Ho Mr. Park's address. On the other hand, Yang Min returns home. He digs a hole and buries the dead bodies of the elderly couple, killed and buried the dog. 
Then, he puts on his suit and prepares to run away. According to the address provided by the priest, Jung Ho arrives at the entrance of Mr. Park's house. With the intuition of being a police officer for many years, Jung Ho guesses that Mr. Park has been killed by Yang Min and Yang Min has been living in this place. Instead of ringing the doorbell, Jung Ho takes out the string of keys he has found earlier and tries them one by one, and one of the keys does open the door. Jung Ho gets into the courtyard and bumps into Yang Min. A furious Jung Ho drags Yang Min into the house and beats him violently. Although Yang Min stabs a knife into Jung Ho's leg, he is still no match for Jung Ho. As Jung Ho is beating Yang Min, he sees this bastard soaking Mi Jin's head in the fish tank. Yang Min takes advantage of Jung Ho's distraction to pick up a golf stick and launch a counterattack. Full of anger, Jung Ho struggles to seize the hammer and subdue Yang Min. Just as Jung Ho is about to send this demon to death, the police arrive at the scene and stop Jung Ho. The police then dig up 12 bodies in the yard, the 8 missing prostitutes, the elderly couple who were visiting, and the owner of the house, Mr. Park, and his dog. The serial murder case is finally solved. But Mi Jin, who had a chance to be rescued, will never come back alive. A wounded Jung Ho stumbles to the hospital to visit Mi Jin's daughter. Perhaps the only thing he can do now is to take care of this child for Mi Jin. The story ends here. The story of The Chaser is based on convicted South Korean serial killer Yu Yong Chol. Yu Yong Chol killed 19 people in less than a year, mostly prostitutes and wealthy old women. In addition to killing, Yu Yong Chol also admitted that he ate the livers of some of the victims. This movie satirizes the ineptitude of the police. In the beginning, Yang Min mentioned that he was not sure if Mi Jin was dead or not. But the first thing the police thought of was not to rescue Mi Jin, instead they regarded Mi Jin as the deceased who has already been killed by Yang Min. The police just wanted to solve the case quickly and cover up the mistake that they failed to protect the mayor. They didn't care about Mi Jin's life at all. And the prosecutor forced the police chief to release Yang Min to cover up the mistake of letting Yang Min go twice before. The escaped Mi Jin once called the police, but the patrolman was sleeping and didn't hear the order to save Mi Jin. I think the incompetent police officers and murderous Yang Min should be equally responsible for the murders. The film shifts the theme from a serial murder case to the incompetence of the administrative and judiciary institutions, making the audience feel more emotionally resonant. As I watch it, I can't help but think, are the people at the bottom really cared for by society? If I were a victim, who would come to rescue me? I hope we can create a more civilized and harmonious world together in the future. Thanks for watching. Detective Jojo will bring up more stories next time.